Hello again everyone, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be looking at subtracting mixed numbers. We are in our math journals, volume 2, uh, unit 5, lesson 8, on page 171. And uh, before we get into uh, any of these problems, let's talk a little bit about money, because that is where you've most likely seen a lot of subtraction of mixed numbers. Okay, Say, for example, you uh, want to buy a, a new magazine. Okay, the new Rolling Stone came out. And let's say that Rolling Stone magazine cost $3.95. I don't know how much the magazine is currently. I haven't done the research. It's been a while since I've read a Rolling Stone. And let's say you wanted to pay for that amount with a $5 bill. So you know that because the price involves cents, you're going to get some change back. You're going to uh, get a mixed number uh, difference in this transaction. Okay, So if I hand the cashier a $5 bill, uh, they are going to break up that $5 bill into five ones, right? And then they're going to break up one of the uh, dollars into dimes. That would be 10 dimes. And then they're going to take one of those dimes and make it into 10 pennies, transforming your $5 bill into $4, 9 dimes, and 10 pennies, which, added all together, would give you a total of $5, the equivalent of $5, okay? So now that I've done some regrouping, I can now subtract 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 9 is 0, bring down that decimal point, and then 4 minus 3 is 1. So my answer to my uh, example problem is a dollar and five cents. That's how much change I will get back. This is subtracting mixed numbers, okay? So when I look at my first problem here, I'm going to be thinking along the same lines. It says, Raphael drew two line segments. The combined length was seven inches. One of the line segments was two and three-eighths inches long. How long was the other line segment? Okay, so let's draw a pair of line segments like so. I've got two endpoints, and then I'm going to put another point somewhere along the line, creating two segments. These two segments are just joined at this little point right here. Okay, so this first shorter line segment, that can be our 2 and 3 eighths. And our entire stretch of line segments combined is 7 and 0 eighths. And we'll get back to that here in a minute. Okay. So what I want to know is what is the length of my unmeasured segment, which I'll just label L, right? Okay, so now I want to know uh, what is the hole to put in my hole box. And again, when I see that word hole, we need to uh, swap it with a synonym unit. Okay, what unit am I measuring? Okay, well, I'm measuring inches because that's how long the segments are in inches. Okay, so here's my number model with an unknown. I'm going to take my longer distance, 7 inches and 0 eighths, and I'm going to subtract 2 and 3 eighths, and that's going to give me my unknown L. Okay. 7 and 0 eighths, that seems odd. Well, when we have whole numbers that do not involve any fractional pieces, we typically don't write fractional pieces next to the whole number. Okay, We just assume when I see a whole number, like say 26, 26 is a whole number and there are no fractional parts. But as you can see, when we deal with dollars and cents, when we deal with amounts of money, we automatically put uh, a place value for the... Uh, for the pennies, for the cents, because we know there might be some uh, uh, change to be made when we get the total price. Okay, Rarely do you roll up to a cashier and give them a bunch of items and they tell you your total price 
uh, is rounded to, uh, uh, to the nearest dollar. Okay? There's usually some loose change involved. Okay? The same is true when we're subtracting fractions. Okay? So another way to think about 7 is to call it 7 with 0 eighths. And I do that because when we go to subtract 7 and 0 eighths, minus 2 and 3 eighths, it's going to remind us that there is a fractional place value. So I'm going to subtract 7 and no eighths minus 2 and 3 eighths. So I start with the fractional part first. Okay, I want to subtract 0 minus 3. Now I can't do that without regrouping, just like over here. I could not take away uh, 5 cents from no cents. I had to borrow some cents from a uh, dollar. Okay, so I had to regroup. So I don't have any fractional parts on my top number, so I have to take my whole number 7 and make it 6. 6 and 8 eighths. Okay, so imagine a pizza that uh, comes out of the oven and it's just a circle. Uh, the, the pizza cooks take their pizza cutters and they slice them into uh, slices. Uh, they're still a whole pizza until you remove one of the slices. So 6 and 8 eighths minus 2 and 3 eighths. So now that I've regrouped, I can now subtract. So 8 minus 3 gives me 5. Because again, since I have like denominators, all I have to do is look at the numerators when I'm subtracting. Okay? So 8 minus 3 is 5. And then I subtract 6 minus 2. 6 minus 2, of course, is 4. So my total becomes 4 and 5 eighths. So L equals 4 and 5 eighths. Okay? So my answer is 4 and 5 eighths inches. Okay? Subtracting with mixed numbers is just like subtracting with fractions, which is a lot like subtracting with whole numbers. You have to be paying attention to place values. You've got to recognize when there's some regrouping to be done, and you just got to follow all the necessary steps. Okay? Let's take a look at one more. Okay? Problem number four is set up vertically for us, so that makes it easy. Uh, so I'm going to subtract four and 45 hundredths minus two and 90 hundredths. Okay, again, this could be translated uh, into dollars and cents if you wanted to. So you have $4.45, and you're going to subtract $2.90. Okay, So just like I did in the previous problem, I'm going to first look at the hundredths place value. I have enough hundredths. 5 minus 0 is 5. I don't have enough dimes or tenths in my uh, tenths place value, so again I gotta borrow a one or a whole, making four dollars into three dollars, and four dimes into fourteen dimes, or fourteen tenths. Fourteen minus nine is going to give me five. We'll bring down that decimal point, and then three minus two is one. So my difference is a dollar and fifty-five cents. So I'm going to do the exact same thing here, okay, with these uh, these fractional parts. I have to borrow a whole number uh, and regroup it into the fractions, okay? So I'm trying to take away 45 minus 90 hundredths. So I don't have enough hundredths, so I'm going to take one of the whole numbers, break it down, and give 45 hundredths another hundred hundredths, or one whole, because one whole is the equivalent of one hundred hundredths. One dollar is equivalent to one hundred pennies. So I'm going to transform forty-five hundredths into one hundred and forty-five hundredths, and then I would subtract. Five minus zero is five. Fourteen minus nine is also five. So I'm left with 55. 55 what? 55 hundredths. And then I just subtract. 3 minus 2 gives me 1. 1 and 55 hundredths. If you look right here, you can see 
that I changed my fractional amount of pennies into 145 cents. By putting 14 tenths in the tenths place value, I basically created 145 hundredths, 145 cents. Okay? You can do this. I know you can. It just takes a little time and practice. But along the way, if you have questions, you know what to do. You need to talk to your math teacher, okay? Ask them the questions, and they will happily help you, okay? I hope this video was helpful for you. Until we speak again, good luck and have a good day. Thanks.